my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka The Mountain Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another review of Real Housewives of Orange County, and this is season 18. This is episode 12, and I believe this is called Elf in the Room. Um, so before we get started, um, this will be probably the last time you see the blonde. R.I.P. Summer is, um, Slowly wrapping up, and I have um, my 50K coming up really, really soon. Um, for those who follow my channel outside of the Real Housewife shows, um, I have this series called Get Fit With Me Presents Accountability. I haven't been doing it lately because I also have my vacation blog, um, Seeing Things Differently, and that um, should be, I think, on the docket. What well, so the First one was, I posted on Monday, so it's out there already. I have another one that's coming on Sunday. And then the following one will be last Sunday. And then we'll be back to the regularly scheduled program when it comes to the gift that with me presents accountability. Because I have been kind of like lagging on that. Um, <laughs> speaking of that, besides that, the other content announcement thing is um, I also am reviewing Real Housewives of Salt Lake City for those who... Prefer this over Salt Lake City, so that's up as well. And bravo. Why would y'all do this to me? <laughs> so the month of uh, October, so next week, starting next week, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me, pardon me. It's going to be kind of an ish show. Um, I think I actually need to, I'll probably move around to seeing things differently to a different day because I found out that the Real Housewives of New York, so Roni will be coming back um, on on um, next Tuesday. And then the Real Housewives of Potomac is coming up on like the first weekend of October on Sunday. So bravo, y'all got me messed up. I basically will have to watch four shows a week which means I'm going to come on the screen <laughs> at least four times a week, if not more, because also my other content that I do as well. So, y'all are not gonna allow me to rest. <laughs> anyway, uh, without further ado, I just kinda wanted to just complain a little bit, but let's get into the um, review. Um, I will say this before we get more into the review, Overall, this episode was okay. It was pretty much kind of a filler. It did heat up towards the end. And honestly, what this season is kind of telling me is um, there's a couple people carrying the show. And if they're not around as much, it th there really isn't much to it. So Shannon, Shannon's the storyline for the whole show. That's like the A, that's the A storyline. And then the B storyline is Jen. If Jen and Shannon were not on this show, and which is kind of fitting that they were partners for the traitor thing, I don't know how entertaining this season would be, if it would be at all. Because a lot of the other women, which, mind you, I do love getting to know Katie, but a lot of the other women don't really got much going on. If They actually kind of don't. I ain't gonna hold you. They really don't. So without them two, I don't know. Not much going on. At least this is what I noticed when it came to this episode. It kind of was really obvious. Um, so that's, to me, the double entendre when it comes to Elephant in the Room. Um, because Tamara ain't got no storyline. Not really. Not really. Her real storyline, she would fall apart if she was to really share what's going on with her. And... Ryan alluded to at the end, and I don't like Ryan, but when Ryan's right, he'd be right. You know, two things can be true. Ryan could kind of be a little bit of a tool, but he could be telling the truth about Tamara. Which, it's interesting how much they have so much to sing for each other. And you know what they say, there's a thin line between love and hate. And they're kind of interchangeable. If you really don't care about someone, the correct way of dealing with them is indifference. I'm just saying. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into the episode. So the episode starts um, with Emily, Gina, and Tamara. They're 
you know, it's the next day, the day after Jen's party, and they're recapping the issues with Alexis and um, Heather. Pretty much what the the thing that happened with Emily, kind of getting into it with Heather, and then in turn getting to it with Alexis. And Emily's trying to explain her point of view. Tamara kind of gets it, but she still doesn't quite get it. Later on, Emily does clear it up a lot more, and then she gets it. Um, which, I, I honestly, I don't understand why they don't get it. <laughs> I'll be honest. Like, this is probably one of the few times where I don't think Emily was reaching. I think for once, Emily was not trying to cause a problem. She just did not quite go about it right, and it, it, it kind of blew up in her face. And then also, too... I know a lot of y'all, and even me, I do like Heather a lot. I do. But one thing's for certain, two things for sure. She does not handle anyone calling out anything that's lack of imperfection. It's very clear. She has a reason behind it. It's been explained in previous seasons. It has a lot to do with her relationship that she had with her mom. And it projects itself on the screen on a very regular basis. It's a personality trait of hers that has been a very known thing. I will say this too, Emily knows that as well, so it does make it hard for them to ever really work as friends. I don't know how it will work, but then actually you kind of see in another scene, Heather is actually talking to Terry about what happened before, as they're on their way to the doctor's office for Terry, um, and Heather, you know, basically says that she still has these issues with Gina and Emily and she doesn't understand why they don't jive. Honestly, I think when it comes to you and Emily, it's what I just mentioned. There's like just a straight up clash of personalities and I don't see how that will ever work because y'all both have unresolved mommy issues that y'all pu pull out in adult life. And it helps make up what this is. And then Gina, I think Katie was a little right about that. That she's a little bit of a social climber. Um, because to me, I don't see why else there should be an issue. Because we see that, you know, Gina blows with the wind. And I just really wish Heather would figure that out. I don't think she needs, really needs to even be cool with Gina. Um, and maybe we'll see later on something happens with that or not. But it just seems like Gina's really only her friend during the season. And it's because it helps keep her on the show. That's to me what it seems like it is. I, it doesn't seem very genuine at all. Um, anyway, so they're talking. And then we see three hours later, Tamara gets that call from... We, we see that the news broke about, because the other thing that was mentioned also with Tamara, Emily, and Gina was the way Alexis was acting at the party, saying something big's about to happen and just, you know, being hysterical and kind of trying, and kind of trying to play victim, basically. And then fast forward three hours later after this conversation, we see that Tamara is on the phone with... Uh, on the phone with um, Shannon, Shannon's hysterical. I'm doing this, we'll get back to why I'm doing that, but that's where it starts off at. And then let's go back to what's going on with Heather and Terry. Heather and Terry, Heather really wasn't really in this episode that much. So I'm gonna just kind of wrap up what she got going on and then we done, okay? Okay, so then from there we see that um, Heather and Terry, again, they're on their way to the doctor's office for, um, and the reason why is it's both a follow-up as well as trying, um, a consultation to get a nose job. And yes, Terry, who is part of Botches on E, one of the doctors and one of the plastic surgeons is he himself is also getting plastic surgery. And I'm sure whoever watches, because I don't watch the show Botches, and we know that Terry's an entertainer. 
He's an entertainer, but he's also a doctor. He's a plastic surgeon. He's a very known plastic surgeon. Um, basically a celebrity plastic surgeon. Um, which is why, you know, Heather is bougie. Um, cause the, she definitely is the one with the coins here. We know that. Anyway, so Terry himself is also, is getting a nose job, but it's actually not for cosmetic purposes. We actually find out, um, so after the stroke that he had and got taken care of, they think that's all resolved, which we find out it is. There's nothing going on when it comes to that. But they are finding out that Terry's breathing sucks. Um, I'm kind of wondering, did they ever rule out sleep apnea first? But clearly they must have, maybe. I mean, it's pretty clear he doesn't have that. But, um, or maybe he does and maybe the surgery will help with it. I don't know. But basically, long story less long, he's getting the nose job to help with his, it's to help improve the breathing pathway because he is, his snoring's really, really bad. It's not good. It's a disruptive sleep for everybody. Like, it wakes Terry up. <laughs> it's so bad. And, of course, Heather is for it too. And... Terry being a plastic surgeon, he knows exactly what he needs to do to get that fixed because clearly it's because he's a plastic surgeon also, he doesn't just do cosmetic plastic surgery. He probably also does corrective plastic surgery, which I know we don't talk about much, but sometimes that needs to happen. Um, honestly, I've kind of, I love my nose. I don't want to change my nose. But one thing consultation-wise I've always been curious about is my sinuses have always been horrible. And I'm wondering if there's something that can be done to help improve my sinuses. And it might might be surgery, I don't know. Maybe if it continues to not improve, which I'm sure it won't, um, maybe I'll look into that a little bit later on in life. But I would say outside of only certain environments, my sleep has never been, it, it has not been great. Honestly, for most of my adult life, my sleeping has been, it, it could be better. The only time where my sleeping has been chef's kiss was when I was on vacation recently. But clearly, when I was in Maine, none of the allergens were there. <laughs> um, my sciences were still not really happy with me. Honestly, my, I don't know if my sciences have ever been happy with me, to be truthful. But anyway, I know I got off the subject. This is not going to be much of a review, so we're I'm, I'm kind of stalling here. But anyway, so to wrap up their story for this episode, he has the surgery. It's fine. He has a little, some funny one-liners here and there because Terry's an entertainer. And that kind of wraps them up. And so we don't really see them for the rest of the episode even um, a party that happens. So the group event that happens, she um, Heather wasn't even invited and you'll find out why because it's who was, whose event it was. So anyway, moving on. So then next we have a dual scene where this is where the story's about to pick up. Um, Jen and Ryan are going shopping together at this place called The Vault. It's like a man's like store. So it has like a whole bunch of like suits and things like that. I wonder if they do the tailoring there also. I was kind of curious. Um, I guess for those who are in that area, let me know in the comments or those who are familiar, let me know in the comments what that's about. I don't really know. But anyway, so they're going shopping. Jen's trying to help Ryan dress somewhat better. I don't know, for those who know, if y'all watched last season, Ryan dresses horribly. He dresses, yeah, his styling it. it it's very, um, and this is not no shade. I no, 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 no shade. He dresses like a douchebag. I want to say the other term, but it's YouTube. F-boy, there we go. He dresses like an F-boy. If I saw someone dressed like him, I would run the opposite direction. If I was drunk and I saw someone dressed like him, I would entertain it just because I'm bored, but then I would, I would run the opposite direction. <laughs> For those who know me, 
I love entertaining things because I get bored sometimes. I ain't gonna hold you. I know that's messed up, a little toxic, but... <laughs> anyway, so in the dual scene, as this is happening, we see... Um, oh, they're recapping the party. Them two are. But then we see in a dual scene, Tamara and Eddie are also talking and they're recapping in the party as well at Jen's house. And the problem is, the issue is, Tamara and Eddie cannot stand Ryan, okay? And a lot of us that watched last season, we don't know how we feel about Ryan either. He does kind of give the ick. Um, it's not as bad as Louis from Real Housewives of um, New Jersey. Because I'm gonna hold you, Louie is the reason why I didn't even review nor watch Real Housewives of New Jersey when it came on last season. I watched it the season before and after that, I was like, okay, I don't wanna see this guy. <laughs> I don't wanna see this on my screen, so I didn't even watch it. So I have no idea what happened that um, when it came to last season of Real Housewives of New Jersey. All I know is they didn't have a reunion. That's all I know. And they're talking about possibly rebooting it. Yeah. Anyway, so I did watch people's recaps though. So shout out to the Brooke Ashley, shout out to Kim Pyre, and also shout out to DJ Richie Sky. I watched their reviews of the show, but that's all I did. I was not, I was not gonna watch the show. Anyway, um, back to the, so it the subject quickly changes where they're basically talking about each other. So Tamara and Eddie are talking about Ryan and Jen and then vice versa. And the thing is both Jen and Tamara are talking about how they've patched things up. They're in the better space now. And, but, and then Jen on one side is trying to get Eddie and Ryan to try to be in a better space. And Ryan ain't really with it for real, but he's trying, he's kind of pretending he wants to entertain it, but it's not giving genuine. You know it's not. Because, unfortunately, I love Jen to death, but she's so naivete, it's ridiculous. Because Ryan can see the play along, along he can see the play that this is not going to end well. And I, I don't, I feel like Jen, part of me feels like Jen maybe knows, but maybe she's playing this along for the cameras for this particular thing. We'll never know. But, um, yeah, no, this is not going to work out. And then on the opposite end, Eddie is even trying to entertain. He's like, no, absolutely not. I love Jen and I love that y'all are in a better place, but no. Um, but it doesn't matter because it's going, they're, they're going to have to have a conversation. <laughs> Thanks to producers and an event, a cast event. You know, that's how that always works. So then next we see Shannon is at her place. And she's talking to her daughter. Um, I forgot her name, but she's one who lives going to college in New York. And they're just having girl talk. She's talking, um, Shannon's talking about dating and um, not Shannon dating, but like if, if her daughter's dating, her daughter's not, not even interested. And sorry, not to bring it back to me, but I'm going to bring it back to me slightly again. I literally just had this exact same conversation with my mom today about how I had no interest in dating in, in the city. I, at this, the funny thing is, Shannon's daughter was talking how I would talk when I was younger. Well, in my head, I wouldn't say it out loud, but I was thinking it. I would go on dates for someone to feed me some nice food. <laughs> Don't judge me. We've all been there when we're younger. And we'll, we'll entertain a date or two to get a nice meal. I've done that before, okay? Um, yeah, I'm past that point. I will take myself out to dinner. <laughs> I, I have no interest right now at all. Um, but anyway, so then after that, then we see later that day, so... Things are not quite in order this episode, but that's what it is. But later on that day, the lawsuit breaks via People Magazine. And Tamara is narrating it. And she's like, I just can't believe this. This is crazy. This is wild. But then it also does explain why 
um, Alexis was acting the way she was acting at the dinner or at um, Jen's party. And I have an opinion about it. We'll get into it later. But anyway, so Tamara tries to call Shannon to console her. I don't know if she really was trying to console her genuinely or not, but it appeared that way. But Shannon didn't answer. But then Shannon does call back, so we think. But then it turns out Shannon actually butt-dialed her. And then that's that scene that we saw at the very beginning of the episode. And Shannon is going off, but she doesn't realize that she accidentally butt-dialed someone. And Tamara hears the whole entire thing. And so T Shannon is blaming Alexis for the whole entire thing as far as the leak is concerned. And is just like hysterical, crying, you know, not doing well, clearly. She wouldn't be because she basically, John just made this public. Um, and it was officially the lawsuit. Before the lawsuit, previous episodes, the lawsuit didn't happen yet. It was really just like litigation. But this is him going forward with it. And not only is he going forward with it, he sends this information to People Magazine so that everyone knows about it. Yeah. And we hear that John did not doesn't want fame. The lies. <laughs> the lies. Anyway. Um, gosh, she's so basula. Um, oh, oh. Muy, muy, muy basula. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I'm triggered. I ain't gonna hold you. That John Jansen triggers me. He just reminds me of all of the, all guys I've dated in the past. Really one. I really only have one who was just like a horrible human being. And... It just replays my head whenever I think of John because he's just such a bad person. <laughs> and I feel for Shannon. And the ironic thing is, if it wasn't for John doing all the things he was doing, I don't, I'm not sure if Shannon's season, even though, trust me, this is not good either. Shannon's having a rough season, but the thing is, I feel like the women would be going harder on her about the DUI and everything else if it wasn't for John making things so much worse. They're actually making Shannon look a lot better than if they were to just, would have just left her alone. And that's the gag. I don't understand why people who are this vindictive don't understand all they had to do. If they really feel a way about certain situations, all they had to do was just leave it alone. But anyway. So basically, though, after the butt out happens, Tamara calls Heather and tells Heather what happened, what what was going on. And that was really then. And then Heather does narrate a little bit in her confessional how she feels bad about the situation. And then we also do have Emily mentioning it, too. And I think this is a little bit later on in the episode, but still pertains where Heather's not Heather, but Emily's giving legal advice, kind of saying, like, if I was John Jansen's lawyer I would just tell him like, hey, take the money, sign the disclosure agreement, move on, live happily ever after. But we all know that this is not about the money. It's never been about the money. It's all about humiliation. That's all it's about. And the thing that gets me, once again, I said it once, I'm gonna say it one more time. If he would have left all this alone and you would have just left it to the ladies talking about what happened with Shannon and the DUI, the humiliation would have been right there already. And he would have been not villainized as, one, as much. But the thing is, he wants fame so bad and has narcissistic-like behavior, he doesn't even realize he's, what he thinks, I don't, I just, I guess to me, I still don't understand what he thought this was going to do. And same thing with even like Alexis. I don't know how she thought this was going to make people like her and want her back on this show. She is one and done. She'll never be invited back. Because the way she just sabotaged the rest of her career and will never be back on this show... 
And then even how afterwards, cause I'm about to spill some tea. Shannon, not Shannon, but um, Alexis Bellino has been crashing out on social media ever since the episode started airing, making her look well the way she's looking. And she's been blaming the producers, Bravo, all that stuff. And that is a huge no-no, you don't do that. So she's basically burning bridges where she will, she will not be back after this. It's very clear. But anyway, so next we have Katie and Matt. And Katie is the one who's throwing the event, so this does explain why Heather is not going to be there, because we know Heather and Katie still aren't really getting along for real, for real. And um, so, but anyway, she is hosting a night with, couple, with a couple's basically party. So that does also mean Shannon will not be there. Alexis won't be there. We don't want her there anyway. I don't even know if Alexa is going to be invited back after this. I have no idea how that's going to go. I'm sure she will be because pro production will produce. Um, and then um, Gina, I don't remember if um, Katie invited Gina or not, but she's not going to be there either. Uh, I think she did, but she's not going to be there. So anyway, um... So that means it's going to be Jen and Ryan, um, Emily and Shane, Tamara and Eddie. And um, so they're, that's going to be the couples that are going to be there at this party. And then leading up to the party, we see a little bit of a mini Housewives montage where we see Emily and Shane getting ready to go to the party. And they're talking about what we need to bring. So next we do have a mini scene where Gina is with her kids and she's getting ready for like um, um, Travis to show up. And I'm a little bit more interested in the storyline just a little bit more now because she did actually share a little bit more. Um, still not enough where I really care all the way, but it does explain why I don't care. <laughs> because... The problem is with this storyline is we do find out from Gina there are legal reasons why she can't really get into the storyline all the way because that is how bad Travis and the ex-wife situation really, really is. There's a lot of legal ramifications going on, a lot of viciousness that's happening there. And I don't think I'm mixing words when I'm mixing words when I say that to the point where it sounds like Gina legally just can't say too much at all. So that's why we don't really know what's going on, but we all we know is bad. And the kids are involved with it. And yeah. So it makes it hard for even if you do like Gina, I don't really like her. I don't really hate her though either. She, I don't feel the way I feel about her as I feel about Tamara. Tamara, I can't stand her. But like it, if we, if she was able to share more, I would, I would care more about the storyline. The problem is she can't. So that's, it, it's kind of a dead end storyline, even though that is really her, her real life. But it sucks because she can't really say much about it. But we do find out though that Gina's um, ex-husband, uh, I believe his name is Matt, I think. I don't remember her ex-husband's name is. Let me take that back. But Brittany and her ex-husband are getting re are getting married. So they are engaged. And um, they talk a little about the commitment ceremony. We find out that um, Brittany is going to take on the last name. So I'm, I don't remember that whole entire last name. I'm not going to even try to pronounce that. Because you already know my enunciations are horrible as it is. I'm not going to try to do more with that. But anyway... Uh, long story less long, Gina is happy for them, but she also feels away because, <laughs> you know, her ex-husband is the reason why their relationship didn't work out. It was very contentious, very much not good, but they are a much, clearly much better place now. But Gina, the one who didn't cause all the issues, is the one who has a mess on her hands, who can't move forward. Whereas her ex-husband, the one who caused all the issues, is moving forward and moving fine with her life. But that's how it works sometimes. It be like that. And honestly, though, at the same time, it kind of is Gina's choice when it comes to that. Um, if she, I, I, and then, and but you can't. I, I know you can't help who you fall for and who you love. 
But part of me just thinks maybe if Gina would have taken the time after that contentious relationship with her ex to actually truly be single and not rush along and get into another relationship, maybe these things would not, maybe things would be different. But, cause I, I guess I just don't see her and Travis going anywhere. You know, you made it known more than once on the show, which hopefully, I feel like Travis watching the show back, he's gonna be extra mad about it. But you made it known on the show in multiple ways this is going nowhere. So why are you still in something that's going nowhere? I, I, I'm just gonna keep it real. Y'all do not have kids together. Yes, y'all raise y'all kids together as a family, but you two do not actually have children together. So there's no reason why y'all have to stay in the stuck status. If you feel like nothing is gonna happen with this, you know, love is not enough. Let's just keep it real. Love is not enough to keep a relationship going like ever. It just isn't. If, the, if there's other things that are stopping you from moving forward, it's a lack of progression. When you can't move forward when it comes to relationship, there's nothing else you can do with that. You gotta just let it go. And I, I, I've spoken from personal experience when it comes to that. I'm at a place now where I am, I know I've mentioned it multiple times, but I am very much voluntarily single for that reason. Because I was someone in the past who hopped from relationship to relationship to relationship. And we, we no. <laughs> I'm, I'm going on two years of being single. And I'm very much okay with it. And some people just need to learn to be that way. Just saying. Anyway, moving on. So it is now time for Katie's party. Um, and Katie, right before the party, now takes the time to warn her, warn her husband about the issues that are going on with Eddie and Ryan. And Matt's like, why are you just now telling me before the party? You know why. Hello? She's producing. Let her produce. <laughs> anyway, so Emily and Shane arrives first, and then we have Tamara and Eddie arrive next. And then last but not least, we have Jen and Ryan arrive last. Immediately, Eddie and, R and Ryan kill the mood. It's awkward. It's, it is awkward. It is so awkward. And but then Emily is cracking me up because she's kind of fetishizing it a little bit. She's like, oh my gosh, these are two like manly men that got a problem. I kind of want to see it. <laughs> I was like, girl. <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, Eddie, maybe? But based off his personality, no. Mm -mm. Looks wise, Eddie would be my type, I'll be honest though because I do go for darker features on men of all races. So, I mean, of course I date, but I also am the United Nations over here and no pun intended. <laughs> if y'all know my recent dating history before I decided I was gonna go celibate, which is recently, um, really since like April, ironically around my birthday. So I was like, yeah, no, I'm done. Um, <laughs> Um, kind of a birthday to myself, I guess. But anyway, before that, my dating history is a little wild. It's just like, there's no pattern. I guess who I end up getting serious with, there might be a pattern. But when it comes to like the dating of it all, no pattern. And my best friend, um, so I went out to a concert. Let's just be honest. Like, I, let's talk here. When I tell you this, this episode is kind of mid- this is why I'm doing this. But anyway, so, um, oh yeah. So my best friend and I were out of the concert and I ran into two of like my ex situations. And like, but they didn't see me because the good news is because I look in Lakita all the time, my hair always looks different. So I, it takes people a minute sometimes to recognize me unless you see me every single day. And, I, and so, one of the exes, I, he was an ex for like 10 years ago. I don't know how we both ended up in the same city when we're both from a different city, but child of like that. And then the other one was like an ex from like pre-world pre, pre -world ending. And 
when my best friend was like, what did they have in common? I'm like, they both like music. <laughs> Cause looks wise, nah. <laughs> For those who know me, it makes sense. But anyway, so um, yeah. Back to the original thing. So, it's awkward. Name calling's happening. Like, Ryan's being immature, calling Eddie a, a, a bitch. Um, and then basically, under his breath, of course. And I hate to say this. I kind of do agree with Ryan to a certain extent. He kind of is Tamara's bitch on this show. It, it does come off that way. So, I ain't gonna hold you. Sorry, I agree with Ryan when it comes to a lot of this stuff. I hate that I agree with someone who's kind of sleazy, but because Tamara is so unbearable, in an odd messed up way, Ryan kind of some, somehow makes more sense to me. It's just about who's more of a douchebag between the two of them. And Tamara just is so unbearable and has been um, historically on this show. But anyway, and honestly, someone needs to, to call Tamara out because no one else does. So it's like, I hate that as a man because that's just never a good look. But at the same time, Tamara has masculine energy. I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel a way about it. I'll be honest. I, I should, but I don't. And this might be my bias about the fact that I just really can't stand Tamara. <laughs> okay. Let's wrap this up because, again, not much happened this episode. I know I keep saying it, but it's true. So, basically, after the awkward interaction, um, Ryan and Matt go to talk outside briefly. And the producers were super shady. So, Matt immediately asked, so what do you do for a living? Just trying to get to know him. Seeming normal as all get out. And they make it sound like Ryan is explaining himself for 10 years. And he's stuttering. And it's like, it's giving, I can tell you lying, cause when you're replying, stutter, 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 stutter. A lot of, is that, that's happening. He has multiple titles, multiple hats, it's giving, he's a scammer. It's, <laughs> and the producers edited this way, it's like, child. And then afterwards, after he's done explaining himself, all we see is Matt just looking like, it's, the look on his face was priceless, like, what? <laughs> I got to like that and Katie for this show because you need, you need some people who are normal. And then two are like just, especially Matt. Matt is to me a normal husband. And so everyone else is so over the top and he's normal. And it cracks me up and I love it. <laughs> that, that, I, I cackled after that, but anyway. So then, back in the house, everyone's back in the house, and Tamara is getting lit. She is super drunk at this point, to the point where Eddie cuts her off behind, you know, behind her back, um, like says, like, hey, Matt, don't give her anymore, she's done. And what gets me about this whole entire thing, Tamara, I'm going to speak directly to you. For how much you've been trying to give Shannon Storm Bador ish about her drinking. Girl, pop me kettle. I know you're not getting behind the wheel, but it, psh. oh, side note. So I know I'm hopping in and out of order, but you remember a couple episodes ago where we were trying to figure out who fell? It was Tamara. Shannon wasn't there. There was no excuse. There was no Trace Amiga. She just did that all by herself. And yet she wants to, be the one who's trying to say that, you know, Shannon has this problem, saying all these triggering words, which honestly, you're not thinking at all about any of your viewers. Maybe some of the people who are watching this show are recovering addicts and you're using all these triggering words just, just, just to be vile and disgusting, which by the way, you know, the more she drank, the more vile and disgusting she became this episode. That, that definitely did happen. Let's be, let's be all the way real. Because Tamara don't know how to carry herself. Like, honestly, Tamara has this cute face, but, like, her attitude is so trailer park. It's very trailer park. And no shade to trailer park because I'm insulting trailer park by saying that. 
White trash. There we go. <laughs> there it is. Because I don't want to say trailer park because you can get a nice mobile home. You, like, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to shame any of that. Like, my um, cousin, not my cousin, my aunt had a trailer park in the south and it was like, not lived in trailer park, but she lived in like a motor home. I, I don't, I'm not trying to shade any of that. Let me just be very, very clear. But sh come on now, y'all know how Tamara is. Like, I, I, I don't know if anyone's a Tamara fan. If you are, I, please explain. Because I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's no shade. I just don't get it. But anyway, so later on, they're all seated. And Tamara goes in producing mode because she ain't got nothing else going on. She don't really want to share what's going on in real life, which <laughs> I love how Ryan called her out in front of the table that exact statement. I was like, I'm glad someone said it because God, the, the women won't, but someone needs to say it. But anyway, Tamara's producing. She's bringing the truth or dare thing up. She mentions to Matt's husband that she saw Katie's butthole. Which, again, vile and disgusting. Honestly, as soon as she, she said that in real life, if someone was to say that to my significant other, I know we're playing a game, but like even how she said all that, it just came off really trashy. I would have kicked her out. That's just me. But anyway. So then from there, um, they... Emily does, and the thing is, one thing that I do like about Emily, I love that Emily turned around how she was acting at the beginning of the season because the way Emily was going, she was looking like Tamara 2.0. I love she willed it back. She's like, whoa. And because I think that, I, ironically, I think that talk with her and Gina helped and helped her reel it back because this version of Emily I've been seeing since that talk, a thousand times better. And so Emily is basically sharing her insecurities and kind of talks to Ryan the details of, you know, what happened. Because we forget on this show, a lot of these people are actually truly in the same circles, at least when it comes to gym and stuff like that. So we, we kind of indirectly find out that Ryan and Emily go to the same gym. So a lot of the women, and including Ryan, has seen... Emily's hard work because Emily does look good. I actually wrote when Emily was coming in on like to the party how great Emily looks. Like that body is chef's kiss. Like I love that she has a little bit of curve to her, but then she's but she's like in shape. It's like it's good. It's good. She looks amazing. Uh, but anyway, um, so. She kind of goes in more into detail about why that fashion show triggered her and the way she broke it down and explained it. I kind of wish, and Katie said it too in her confessional. Not, I don't even know if it was in her confessional in person, but Katie did mention that she wish Heather would have let Emily explain it the way she's explaining it right now. Because, yes. That's why she felt away. And I'm sorry, normally when it comes to a lot of Emily's issues, I would say, yeah, she needs to get therapy. And that's true, she still does. I'm not saying she doesn't. But when it comes to this situation, I'm slightly triggered by it because I've had body issues, body image issues in the past myself. Y'all have seen on my channel, especially if y'all follow some of my other content, about how I've yo-yoed. Like, I started off this channel, I was a little bit smaller, and I'm, I've been trying to fix it. And it, if you're someone who has ever had body issues, image, body issue images, I mean, issues, body image issues, there you go. Oh my gosh, I couldn't, I don't know why I kept interchanging it. But my point is, if you've ever had that, or any type of form of body dysmorphia or anything like that, you understand Emily. It's not much to it. Like, leave how you feel about Emily as a person outside of it. But like, it's a real, it's a real story. Okay, it's real. Anyway, so then from there, they talk about Shannon and the lawsuit. And then that's when they go into the details of that. And that's where you have Emily, not em yeah, Emily explaining, you know, what John should do legally. And 
they all know the obvious that really John is doing this to be malicious. But like Tamara is blaming it all on John. And because she doesn't think Alexis has anything to do with it. And I'm just like, Tamara, girl. At this point, though, we don't know how all the other ladies feel. We only know how Shannon feels about whether Alexis has anything to do with it all or not. And Shannon thinks opposite, and I agree with her. Because the way Alexis has been acting this season, and even the way she acted the, at, that, at Jen's party, telling. Completely telling. Anyway, so then from there, um, oh, and also too, we, the, re, the way we find out that Shannon feels the way she does, she does actually share her confessional that she thinks Alexis had everything to do with it because this rollout was literally the same as how it was when she got sued the first time by her and her ex-husband. The common denominator is her. And also she does explain that the press got the copy of the lawsuit and everything before her and her attorney got it. Okay, do the math. Anyway, so we do then see that Shannon um, is at home alone um, while all the other ladies are there, Shannon's alone. Cause also too, by the way, Shannon wasn't there because she's, you know, she's not really a couple. She, I mean, she doesn't have another person. And so she, Katie did not want her to feel weird by like inviting her. She's the only one that doesn't have someone. So she wasn't invited only for that reason. But she's, she's really, and one thing I did write when it comes to this, when it comes to Shannon is we see Shannon actually feeling her feelings. We don't see any drinks near her, no alcohol or nothing. She's just in her pajamas. It looks like she's been crying with her dog dealing with it. And I don't know if maybe she snuck it up before or did it for the cameras, who knows? But like based off of this thing alone, I do feel that Shannon is trying to do the best she can to feel her feels and handle things and she's not abusing. She's trying her hardest not to do it. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm bringing it up because Tamara, I'm speaking directly to you. You better not bring up her drinking problem anymore. Okay, it's tired. It's tired. Anyway, Tamara continues to produce because she brought all this stuff up. Tamara's the one who's bringing up all the subjects because she's producing. She's in her producer's bag. And from then, we talk about the elephant in the room, which is why this episode is called that. And it is Eddie and Ryan and the podcast. Because Ryan did a podcast... And one thing that I notice when they're, Tamara's doing all these, ac accusing Ryan of doing all these things, the producers are sharing evidence of what Ryan said. And ironically, Ryan didn't do any of those things. I don't know if the producers just really, really like Jen, which I believe it, they probably do. Or if it's actually, because I'm not going to listen to this podcast <laughs> that she, he was on. I'm not going to do it. But it appears Ryan really didn't do these things. And it's just Tamara reaching. She's reaching the whole entire time. Eddie's just kind of supporting her and just kind of just being like the B-Mike. And finally, oh, Jen. 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 Jen, Jen did it. Jen, the way she carried herself in this scene, chef's kiss. So I feel like last season we would have just had Ryan kind of dealing with this and Jen kind of panicking a little bit and not doing much. Jen spoke the F up. She was like, yo, why are we doing this? What are you doing? We're stepping backwards, you know, to Tamara. Like, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And then she, Tamara tries to like deflect to say, well, it's him, it's him, it's him. And she's like, but he didn't say these things. And Jen pushed back every single statement. And then Jen got her. Jen got her and made Tamara retreat. And I love it. 
I love it. The way Jen and Ryan got in that and Eddie couldn't do nothing about it. Cause then at the end, Eddie is turning on Tamara too. Oh, I loved it. Because Tamara, by the way, is sloppy drunk towards it at this point. And so, and Tamara doesn't know when to stop. And it's at the point where even Eddie's like, yo, because what Jen did, she brought Eddie into the conversation. She's like, Eddie, me and you have a great relationship. How could you let Tamara do all this to me? Like you're standing, you're standing side, you're just standing there and just letting him, letting her do all this. Why would you do that? And Ryan did the smart thing and went on mute. Instead, because what Ryan could have done, which would have made it worse, is calling him a B. He didn't do that at this moment. I mean, he did earlier, but like, that's neither here nor there. But at this moment, he didn't do that. And so, because Jen kind of got Eddie together right then and there, and Tamara is like kind of in a corner here at this point, because Eddie's like, oh no. Oh no, we got Jen activated. Cause if Jen's activated, the nice one, the one that everyone loves, the fan favorite, cause we know Jen's a fan favorite of this show, other than Shannon. It's like 1A and 1B. Them two are the two most, well, at this point, Jen's above all of them. Jen's the most likable new housewife because she just, it's literally an angel. So when you attack, because, because they know what happened last season. They can't really attack her for real. Because it's not going to make them look good. So the only thing it could do is attack Ryan. But Ryan actually stepped aside and let her handle it. And she was like, and, and she articulated, why are, you letting, why are you letting her do this? And then Tamara tries to step his, take it a step further. She's like, we're not talking about the FBI. FBI. And... Eddie is trying to stop her. He's like, stop it, stop it, stop it. And what we find out though is that, and we, if you've been following the vlog, the blogs and all that prior to the show, you know that Ryan, and it was alluded by the producers, Ryan apparently has his business partner who is being investigated by the FBI. So that money might be a little funny. And it's been alluded more than once that the money might be funny. And Tamara is claiming the confessional that Jen knows all about it, but she's playing dumb. And maybe she does, but at the end of the day, it's not your business. But then towards the end, as Tamara just realized she's in the losing battle, she retreats. And then that's when she leaves and leaves Eddie there hanging and then like falls on her way out the door because she leaves. She like, she leaves like Katie's house. Because no, everyone's like Tamara, no. No one's on Tamara's side. Tamara is by herself on the island as she's doing all this. Because you know Katie is not going to be okay with her doing this with um, with Jen. And this is also at Katie's house. So K Katie's like, no, we're not doing this. And even Emily's like, no, we just got cool with her. I just got, so Tamara's by herself doing all this. Because she was do she was doing too much. And um, Eddie's just like, just sitting there looking dumb. And in the confessional, <laughs> Ryan read them their rights. Because Ryan, which he still, again, two things could be true. He might actually really, the money really might be funny. He, everything that Tamara could be saying might be actually legit. Because even like Emily kind of co-signed that uh, we're in the street is things are not what it looks like. And we kind of somewhat already know that, but I love the nugget that she put in, that, that Ryan put the in. It's like, you know, miserable people do miserable things. And this facade, because also too, as he's narrating this, it does, it, it does check that Tamara and Eddie's relationship is a total sham. They don't really like each other. They're only they're only together still for this show. Tamara has tons of resentment. And honestly, it's giving that Tamara is completely jealous of Jen. 
Because I don't think Tamara likes having to work the way she has to work. Because we know Eddie, because Eddie doesn't have a job anymore. And it was alluded, I think, at the end of last season that she, that, that Eddie's getting on her nerves because he's always there. And it was even alluded earlier on when he was there that she's like cleaning everything else. He's just always there. And then even when it comes to like the big bear house and all that, I don't know how much longer they're going to be together, but we're not seeing that side of it because Tamara will not show that side of it. And also too, Tamara and her issues with her kids. Which by the way, Tamara tried to reach and say that um, Ryan mentioned, mentioned the kids. He kind of did, but it was some semantics. It was not, she made it sound like he was like literally talking about the kids for real, for real. But I think Ryan someone knew he was doing, but like... It was enough where, like, I'm going to let it pass because I, I'm sorry. I, I really don't like Tamara. Um, <laughs> and Ryan, the only reason why I'm on your side is because you're with Jen. I'll be honest. There you go. But anyway, as Tamara falls, that concludes the episode. It ends it to be continued. And really, it was kind of a lackluster episode until this point. Anyway... Hopefully you enjoyed this review. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon and Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.